Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Inside Guns with your host, me, the Yankee Marshal. Today, I want to talk to everyone out there about the tragedy that's ongoing in uh, the Ukraine right now. Now, I'm not here to talk about the political ramifications of it or the economic ramifications of it. Uh, I don't think there's very many people in the gun community that, despite what some political powers are saying, are being uh, persuaded to support a Russian dictator that has been the enemy of America at every opportunity. Although I do see some people falling for that crap. But I will tell you, I whoever uh, is uh, versing whoever, if Vladimir Putin's on one side, I'm pretty much, unless there's some really extenuating circumstances, going to be on the other side. Period. Uh, he is one of the worst despots in the world. Uh, I don't know why some people want to muddy those waters. But uh, I want to talk about what's going on in the Ukraine right now, and not really the political or the economic aspects of it. I want to talk about what lessons we're seeing over there. What we're seeing unfold and the lessons we're learning from their situation. And one of the biggest lessons I think people should pay attention to is how in this time of great need, they have suddenly, in a state that's not that uh, gun-friendly, that Ukrainian state is not somewhere you would say you have a lot of rights as far as self-defense, firearms, etc. It's almost as bad as Russia. Uh, at this time of need, they've decided, wow, something like the Second Amendment is not only important, but absolutely necessary. They have decided that suddenly... Having armed citizens that can stand up to an invading power or a power that's trying to uh, take power away from a duly elected government, etc., it's, it's important. It's so important that not only are they granting people the rights now to keep and bear arms, but they're also trying to provide them for them because it is so important to have an armed populace who can fight for the values of the country. Doesn't that sound a lot like what we're always saying about the Second Amendment? It's not about hunting. It's not about personal defense even. Those are just side aspects of it. The main reason we have a Second Amendment is in case we ever have to fight to keep our way of life, to stand up for our beliefs and our Constitution, and prevent any power, foreign or domestic, from bastardizing those or taking them away completely. And it's funny how people can still look over there, especially people on the left here, and miss that message of how important an armed populace is when defending your sovereignty. They've recognized it in the Ukraine. Like I said, they don't have a Second Amendment. They basically granted people the Second Amendment rights uh, and then tried to arm them and are trying to arm them. Because they know now when the chips are down, an armed population is not only important, it's essential. Especially when you don't want to be run over by bullies and people who want to force their opinion on you or do not like the fact that you're becoming a free people and can think for yourselves and they want to take away that freedom and that ability to make decisions. Which is what this is really about over there. Russia doesn't like that the Ukraine values independence and freedom over doing what they're told. In America, we don't like to do what we're told. Over there in Ukraine, they're realizing now, if you don't want to be told what to do, you got to be able to fight for your principles and your laws. And we need to recognize that here. We need to look at them and go, oh, I guess what we're saying isn't just hypothetical. Because when the chips are down in other countries that value freedom, the Second Amendment suddenly becomes a thing, even though they never had it. So it makes me sick to my stomach to think that we have these real world examples, yet there's people in our country fighting to get rid of the Second Amendment because it just shows that they are ignorant of reality and that they will ignore things that are actually happening, things that are actually showing the importance of the Second Amendment simply because they support some billionaire who has convinced them that us having guns is a bad thing. Blaming all of the woes on, you know, people with guns and, oh, we wouldn't have gang problems if we didn't have guns and we wouldn't have mental health problems if we didn't have guns. That we take away guns will solve all those things. Well, no, if we actually dealt with the reasons people are in gangs and we provided mental health care, that would deal with those problems. Taking the guns away doesn't do anything. The guns are actually essential. They serve a greater good. 
An armed populace serves a greater good. An armed populace should be in existence in this country, and that armed populace should be insisting that our government cares for the causes of gun violence and gang violence and mental health issues. If we forced our leaders to deal with the actual problems, well, then the guns wouldn't be an issue. But that's getting a little off track. Like I said, I just wanted to point out that in this, in this time of great need and great uh, danger, even the Ukrainian government determined that, hey, the Second Amendment is something we should have. And yet here in this country, we have it, and so many people are trying to throw it away. The same people that are right now just worshiping Zelensky, pretty much, putting him on a pedestal, talking about how wonderful he is, are willing to throw away our Second Amendment rights right as he's granting them to his people. And they are actually glorifying that. Uh, CNN, other sources, MSNBC, that normally are so anti-gun they can't stand it. Uh, you know, they just can't tolerate the fact that guns exist. They're praising these things. They're praising citizens over there for taking up arms against the Russians. They're like, they're heroes. They're brave. But then in this country, when someone wants to do that, they're like, oh, they're, they're traitors. They're, uh, they're militia. You know, they try to use that as a bad word. Or they're uh, uh, seditionists. You know, they don't like armed people over here, but they somehow love them over there. That's called hypocrisy. The same... Uh, principles that make an armed population a good thing over there is what makes it a good thing over here. And people need to start realizing that. We don't want to find ourselves in a situation like where we've been disarmed, like most of the people in the Ukraine don't have arms. We don't want to find ourselves like that in this country when, you know, and it doesn't have to be a foreign power. It can be corporate powers that decide, yeah, we don't want the, some of the rights people have, like the workers and stuff, we don't want those to be around anymore. And since the population can't fight back and we own the politicians, we're going to decide we're going to make some changes in this country. We don't want to find ourselves in that situation fighting the, you know, this time the evil empire is corporate greed or maybe those shifty Canadians. I've never trusted the Canadians. A lot of them speak French, you know. Uh, and I don't trust anyone with a flappy head that speaks French. So... Maybe it'll be the Canadians we're fighting back against. But we don't want to find ourselves in the situation that Ukrainians found themselves in, to where they had to instate a Second Amendment and try at the last minute to make sure people are armed. We've already got the Second Amendment here. We need to start respecting it, and we need to start understanding why it's there. And it's, like I said, not about hunting. It's not about self-defense. Those are just great aspects of the Second Amendment. The main purpose of the Second Amendment is when we find that our values, our laws, our way of life is being threatened, we have a way of fighting back. And no army in the world is as strong as a hundred million armed citizens. There's no army that's going to be that strong. And that's why the Second Amendment has to exist. That's why people need to start recognizing why it's one of our most important amendments. I say our First Amendment is our most important one. And the Second Amendment is even more important because it protects our most important amendment, our most important right. So people need to wake up, get their heads out of their asses, especially on the left, and realize that this thing going on in Ukraine, that's a real-world example of why the Second Amendment is not only important, like I said, but necessary. All right, everybody, before I go, I want to add one more thing. If you have not become a patron yet and you want to be and you want to be in the running for the drawing on the 4th of next month for the friend of the month, today is your last day to join Patreon or your last day to come into the live chat tonight and do a super chat or your last day to join Subscribe Star and be one of my starlets uh, because this is the last day of the month. If you want to be in the running for the drawing on the 4th, where you get to be the friend of the month for the entire month and you get to spend a gift certificate worth up to $800 retail wherever you want to spend it on anything you want to spend it. I don't care if you want to buy shrimp out of the back of a truck along the highway. I'll pay for it. You want to buy uh, a violin. I've paid for that before, believe it or not. People have actually used their uh, friend of the month to do that. Or if you want to buy something that goes bang, that's up to you. You spend the gift certificate however you want as long as it's legal or at least mostly legal. So if you haven't become a patron uh, yet, please go on over. I'll put links in the upper corner of this video to Patreon and Subscribestar. Uh, also, we do a live chat every night. You can come on over there. Also, I want to add that we have chosen uh, January's 
TYM Triple P recipients. I will announce those tomorrow. They've already been contacted, but I will announce it for everybody else. And with that being said, I am done for the day. I hope you enjoyed the show. I hope you come back again tomorrow. Until then, remember, always carry and stay safe until I see you again. 